Okay, um, whenever we're solving exponential uh, problems, what we want to make sure we're doing is we want to make sure we're trying to work towards a process, right? We have our x as our um, exponent right now, so we need to get that x down from that exponent. So there's a couple methods we could use, um, and we, you know, we really need to make sure we understand the properties of logarithms. So if you haven't studied RDU property logarithms, study them because all we're solving is, is just using those properties and manipulating the equations to use the, our properties to our advantage. So the first way that I always like to always look at this is whenever I'm dealing with exponential um, equations, I always want to see if I can get them to be the same basis because if you guys remember, if I have 4 squared equals 4 to the x, right? Well, that's awesome. This is great because guess what? I know that 2 has to equal x, right? So what I essentially do is I can cancel out my two bases. So where, how, why was this always come up? Well, what if I had 16 equals 4 to the x? Well, I can manipulate that 16 and write it as 4 squared equals 4 to the x. Therefore, 2 is equal to x. Does everybody kind of see that? Now, that's a very basic example. Um, but here, I have the same thing. I just have a little bit more difficult numbers. So I have 1 over 256. Well, how can I manipulate that to see if it has the same base of 4? Now, it might not, or it might. And if it does, it's going to make the problem very easy. So I have 4 raised to the negative x equals, I can rewrite this as a numerator of 256 to the negative first power. All right, you guys got to remember that you can write your uh, a 1 over 256, raise it to the negative first power. Then I notice that, yes, actually 4 um, to the fourth power is 256. So I have 4 to the negative x equals 4 to the fourth power to the negative first. Then remember that whenever you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply them. So I have 4 to the negative x equals 4 to the negative fourth power. Now I have my 1 to 1 property, cancel out. Negative x equals a negative 4. Then what I'll do is divide by negative 1. And I get x equals a positive 4. And that's how you solve it. Now, let's pretend, I don't know, let's just do another problem right now. Just so you guys see, what if they weren't the same? Okay, what if you had 4 to the negative x equals um, 257? 1 over 257. Well, I would still kind of follow the same rules. I would write 257 to the negative first power. Then, however, here, I can't get rid of this anymore, right? But what I could do is I could take the log of both sides. So if I took the log of 4 to the negative x equals log of 257 to the negative first power. Then what, what base of logarithm would I want to use? Well, by knowing my properties of logarithms, I know that log of a raised to the a equals, I'm sorry, and then raised to the x equals x. So what I'd want to do is I'd want to pick my base to be the same as what I'm evaluating for over here because what happens is this is now going to cancel out and leave me a negative x. This is a separate problem, by the way. So therefore, this would cancel out and I'd be left with negative x equals, I can bring this down in front, a negative 1 log base 4 of 257. I could cancel out my plus and my negative, so I just left with x equals log base 4 of 257. So when doing this problem, that's how you solve it. However, don't be afraid. If you can't rewrite it as a product of your same base, like this one, if I just change the problem a little bit, you can still take the logs of both sides and get your answer. I could have taken the log of both sides and gotten, still would have gotten four. I just wanted you guys to see it's much easier if you can manipulate it and get it to the same, um, uh, get it to the same basis because then you can cancel them out.